All right, so we are back for another episode of the Down to Business podcast here with Tamar Turner. So for today, we sat down with Wavy Banks from North Carolina, but currently residing in Atlanta and has been for the last three years. So got into a lot of the details about that and what's that been able to do for his career as far as, you know, propelling him, but also how the resources there can definitely make or break careers. We also, you know, were able to talk about just some of the things that he's doing as an artist, just because he feels like he hasn't truly hit his ceiling yet. So definitely be sure to tap in with him and tune into a lot of what he has coming. So without further ado, enjoy episode 75, All or Nothing. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Down to Business podcast here with Tamar Turner. And oh man, when you, when the, when I bring the ECU folks on, I feel like I just got a different type of appreciation. I got to come with a different type of energy, man, because it's, it's just so amazing for a lot of the people who I went to school with, a lot of the people you know who I even worked with, who are just out here doing amazing things. People who you know who. Uh, we started together in a sense, or just people I was able to meet at different stages of my journey. And like I said, even share jobs with and things like that. But to see us, you know, really graduate and propel ourselves into various careers and even propel ourselves into the lanes and the avenues that we wanted to be a part of. It's amazing. So sitting down today with my boy, Wavy Banks, man, out of North Carolina, he's been making it happen. But now you're actually in Atlanta, right, bro? Yeah, I'm in, I've been in Atlanta probably the last three and a half years. Three and a half years. So he's been kicking it. So I'm actually jealous because I love the A. I was definitely trying to move there after graduation and, and everything like that. But this is my guy, man. Definitely somebody who I met at ECU and somebody who I was at Foot Locker with. So we already know how that was going, just slinging the shoes and everything like that. But no, definitely just a good, genuine dude. But somebody, as I was speaking to a little bit earlier, somebody who just I've been tapping him with a lot on social media, just been following the journey, even was telling him before I started the interview. I used one of his uh one of his one of his bars on my pick i said man this is hard i'm, I'm a big caption dude big about the you know the artists and everything so he he had he was he was talking some truth on that one so i had to drop i got a couple of caps of his saved in my notes actually so y'all gonna see them kind of come sparingly but definitely excited to be sitting down with you today bro so how's everything going how you feeling man everything's going great bro appreciate you for having me on for real man but uh everything going good man i can't complain like i said i've been in the ages grinding away it's just one day at a time, just working, just one step closer to the dream every day, for real. Love that, love that, love that. So, you know, for the people tapping in from your side in Atlanta, for the people who may be tapping in from my side in Florida, and I know we're going to have the North Carolina Mutuals in between, can you just give us, you know, a little bit about yourself and then we'll bring you on the podcast today? Yeah, uh, so for everybody that don't know me, I uh, go by Wavy Banks, artist uh, originally from Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, went to ECU, that's how we met here. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but after graduation, I uh, moved out to Atlanta. I had got a job out here. Uh, but really, like, one of the biggest things that brought me to Atlanta is, like, I always loved music. I just never really never really pursued it because it was just something that just wasn't, like, realistic for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, growing up, like, neighborhood, like, we had a bunch of people that could rap. You know what I'm saying? So, like, it was just, like, some one of those things. Like, we'd just be chilling on the fr uh, green box outside, everybody rapping and stuff. But, like... I just came here like I, I felt like I got reconnected with my childhood or something. It was just like, I don't know. I felt like my whole life I was just doing what everybody else wanted me to do. So I was like, all right, my like I graduated. I got this degree. You can get up off my back. Like I'm about to I'm about to do my thing now. So that's that's what I've been doing since I've been on the A. I love that, man. And it, and it really just speaks to me, too. Something that I always tell people about Atlanta, and I really think the, a big reason as to why I wanted to get out there was I just feel like it's the hub of opportunity, especially for African-Americans. I tell my friends, I tell business owners, I tell folks who I met, even when people were asking me why I wanted to be in Atlanta, I said, yo, I feel like if you just have a craft, if you do something, if you want to do something, if you want to meet people, network, connect, I feel like the A is the place to be. Like a lot of people say, oh, it's clustered and different things like that. The traffic is wild. There's a biggest thing i hate about the a not gonna lie yeah, yeah, yeah. can't stand driving in atlanta it's terrible like terrible like the summer will be it'll say five miles away it'll be like 30 minutes away though dog but yeah. no i just feel like it, it's definitely a place where collectively especially minorities and african-americans bro they go there they just eat it's a lot of people who do just different things down there think about all the talent just in your industry that came out of atlanta so they yeah. they, they basically they 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 like new york when it comes to like the rappers and just who they know for and different things like that so i love that i love the fact that you've been kicking it now for three years now and really just been making it happen. But something that really stood out to me was you saying that 
you know, you felt like you were at one point you were doing what everybody else wanted you to do. And I feel like that that's very common. It, oftentimes we can feel like we're not really following the track of our lives. We're not really doing what we want to do, whether it be for financial reasons, whether it's just for personal reasons, whether it just be, you know, because of the family and just what you have to do. So mm-hmm. was it hard? Was it did you feel like you had more pressure on you when you really took on the wavy bank side of things when you really started to do what you wanted to do? Did you feel like, you know, people were kind of looking at you funny? Did you feel like you had a little bit more to prove or were you really just approaching it like, yo, this is my time. I'm going to make it happen. I mean, like with me, I've always been the type to, you know what I'm saying? If I'm going to do something, then that's what it is. Like whatever somebody say, whatever, like I don't, I don't really care about none of that. But uh, I did have like a lot of support with it though. Cause like a lot of people like, you know what I'm saying? Like we hear me like freestyle and stuff. Cause like I, you know what I'm saying? We get late, go to the parties, be drunk, freestyle. People like, like, bro, you rap? Like, I'm like, nah, like, nah. So like, you know what I'm saying? When I first started like actually like getting in the studio recording tracks, like some people was like, bro, like it's about time. You know what I'm saying? So some, a lot of people was waiting on it, but like to the people it was brand new to, like everybody's been pretty receptive to it. And they feel otherwise. They ain't said it to me, so. No, for sure, for sure. And, some, and people definitely going to let you hear it, bro. I feel like some people are definitely sugarcoat things, but I feel like because the the industry itself is just so populous that everybody is, you know, everybody has the sound clouds and everybody is sending things off and wanting you to do this and listen, subscribe and share. People are going to tell you, you know, when this is just not it, when you're not really differentiating yourself from other people or when you really kind of just blending in or, or going under the surface. So for you hearing that, I know that that, that had to just be eye open. That had to just be a great feeling. That had to be something where you like, okay, I, I knew my ability. I knew what I could do. But the fact that, you know, I'm getting on a track, I'm I'm doing what I do and other people really rocking with it. They telling me to keep going. That's amazing. That's motivational. So what would you say was what would you say has been an eye opening experience for you uh, upon getting into this industry? Was it I would even say what what was the what was more so like your transition? coming to Atlanta three years ago when you first got there, were you like well connected already? Did you know a lot of people? Was it something where you first got there and you kind of just had to build your way up really from top to bottom? Man, it was from the ground up. Like I knew nothing about nothing. Like I had no family here. I have, well, I did have a couple couple friends here. Uh, Actually uh, one from ECU, if you remember, uh, Shaquilla, she was out here. She was out here doing her thing. And she uh, she really plugged me just as far as visuals. Uh, She was working, Cause she helps out uh, directing videos. She was working with one of uh, the videographers that I work with. Uh, so when it was time for me to shoot a video, like I linked up with her and got connected uh, that way just for like visuals and stuff. But as far as like recording and making tracks, bro, I was out here just doing my thing. Like I had ordered my own equipment and stuff, got everything set up myself. Like for probably for about four or five months, I ain't, you know, I was recording the mic backwards, man. <laughs> like I was just, I was just trying to figure it out, man. So, but we figured it out though. So it's been, it's been cool. But like the biggest thing, like transition wise was really just like getting started for real. Like I would say like, cause like Atlanta, like everybody, you know, Atlanta, definitely a lot of opportunity, a lot of networking, but you know what I'm saying? If you're not familiar with that type of environment, like Atlanta swallow you whole, bro. Like a lot of people would just come out with no plan or, you know what I'm saying, with no vision or not even a plan, but like just not focused for real. Like, cause like, you know, it's a lot of money in Atlanta. It's a lot of opportunity, especially for young black people, but it's also a lot of cap in Atlanta too. Like you can, it's easy to get caught up in the wrong mix or, you know what I'm saying, be in the wrong crowd and let that distract you. So, like, the biggest thing for me was just getting started and staying focused, but, gotcha. yeah. That's... And, I love, and I love that you kind of made that, I, I love that you kind of made that connection, too, because whereas, yes, I definitely do speak to a lot of, it's definitely a lot of support, it's definitely a lot of love, it's definitely, you know, if you, if you know the right people, if you can get connected with the right folks, it can definitely do you well, but in the same breath, I'm going to also agree with what you said. It's, it's it's a lot of BS out there. It's a lot of, you know, people say one thing or, or or plug you in here or just swear they know this and that or so many people. And when it come down to it, you're not really like that. You you really just like me. You really kind of even, you're not even, I, I was kind of more connected before I even met you on, on a type of thing like that. And it's easy for people to, you know, just be sold a dream. And you you somewhere new for the first time, you almost feel helpless in a sense. You're not really knowing who is what and what is what. Sometimes, yeah, it can, they can, you can have a wrong judgment of character. You can think somebody is really being genuine and authentic with you and little do you know they just have a, a personal gain that they want to do so what would you say is the biggest thing that really kept you focused obviously being in a new space for somewhere knowing what you wanted to accomplish but knowing kind of where you were in the space and like you said it was a lot going on you're not a stupid individual you know kind of how that goes you know where you came from and everything like that so mm-hmm. what really kept you 
on track and what really kept Wavy Banks, you know, continuing to elevate? Uh, well, the thing that like just allowed me to keep going for real was like every time I would record, I would hear like the progression in myself. So it's just like, I, I just love like seeing like, it's just like, all right, like, you know, this track was better than the last one. All right, this one was better than the last one. My, it's just, for me just saying, all right, like, how good can you be? You know what I'm saying? It's just like, you don't keep going. Like, you don't know what your ceiling is. Like, I still don't feel like I've reached my ceiling. You know what I'm saying? Like, I recorded, I was recording earlier. You know what I'm saying? It's just like every day, like, we just keep going. Like, my thing is, like, once I make my mind up on something that I want to do, like, I don't like halfway doing things. Like, if I'm going to do it, like, I'm going to go all in. So, like, it's just been like that continuous growth, seeing myself get better. And then to just surrounding yourself with like-minded people is like a big thing for real. Cause it's like one thing to, you know, be grinding and be working, but to actually, you know, take that work and then put it on display and then do it again and then do it again and then do it again. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people will drop a song, one song or something, you never hear nothing again or whatever the case may be. But like really surrounding yourself with people that like really want you to win and got like the same type of goals as far as like progressing in life, like that's that's huge as far as like staying focused and you know what I'm saying, moving forward. So that's been definitely been a big part of where I'm at now. A lot of people sleep on having a successful circle, man. It's just like, I, I think that sometimes I saw I saw a post that was just like some people kind of keep people around because they they, they want to always feel like, you know, some people keep people around that are lower than them because they always want to feel like, you know, that they the top dog, that they always, you know, just doing the best that they can be. But for me, it's just like, yo, I want my I want my circle to be eaten at all times, eating better than me. Like my circle of people who I went to high school with, I think about them immediately, guys who I talk to almost every day. Like we got a group chat. One of my boys is in the NFL. Two of my boys are area managers with Enterprise. Another one of my boys is an artist. He's in um, medical school right now and, and just different things like that. So it's just like, bro, I always love the idea or the fact that, you know, people can be at different places, at different spaces in their life. But at the end of the day, everybody is eating in their respective craft. But I really love it when you're doing better than me, when you when you are so much of because it's just like, yo, instead of envying you, instead of, you know, just trying to side swipe and side talk and different things like that. I'm I'm not only am I rooting you on, but it's making me want to work harder. I wake up now. I see my boy, you know, just had five tackles in the game or I see my boy just got recognized at enterprise for something that he did. Oh, well, I got to get in the podcast lab, man. I got to do something else. And it's not even to say to one up you, but it's just like, yo, if they are grinding, if they are working hard every day, if they are chasing their dreams just the same, there's no reason why I can't. We, we all get the people say we don't all get the same 24 hours, but we all get 24 hours in a sense. And it's really just about what you do with it, how you make it. And now, granted, everybody has different access to resources and obviously you in different positions and things like that. Yes. But at the end of the day, it always comes down to am I making the most of my time? Am I doing what I can be doing with everything around me? So what would you I see that you work a lot with Keith. Keith promotes a lot. You For know sure. what you got going on with everything. And Keith's always been a, a genuine, humble individual to me. But what would you say? Um, how would you kind of explain the the roles of how like everything works? Like I know you're kind of not like a one man show as far as like editing and promotion and different things go, but just how exactly is the wavy banks? You know, like team and how does all the promotion and things like that? How does that really come together? Just give us like an inside look to that. Sure. So like big big shout out to Keith. Like Keith, man. Like he moved out here what two years ago? I want to say. But like soon as like soon as he got here, like we hit the ground running. So of course, you know what I'm saying? I make the music, like I have like my creative direction and everything. But just when it comes down to handling business, like let's say like I'm at a show performing or something, you know what I'm saying? Keith is walking around, he's talking to people, he's networking, boom, boom, boom. Cause you know, like we got um we got our brand of Relentless Mind, you know what I'm saying? Key CEO, founder, everything, you know what I'm saying? So, like, under that scope, like, as we work in doing business, like, you know, it's hard as an artist to wear all the different hats, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't, you know, shoot my videos. I can't edit my videos. I can't make my beats. I can't always network while I'm performing, you know what I'm saying? It's hard to make certain connections at different times. Like, he's, like he, he's on that, bro. Like, he's very thankful for him, you know what I'm saying? Even, like, in studio sessions, like, I'm doing something, you know, he's like, hey, you know, you might want to try putting this here or, you know, try saying this like that or just different things like that. That's been huge, man. Uh, but he's definitely a big part of the process. Uh, my boy Jordan is an artist as well, uh, artist and engineer, like helps me with the mixing, gets my mixer sounding good. i uh, got a couple other engineers I work with. 
uh, videographers, like they play a huge part. Like shout out my boy uh, Rex, who's a uh, videographer based in Atlanta. Uh, and then my boy Nye as well. He's uh, actually from North Carolina, was at ECU for a little bit, uh, but he's out in the A. But like, it's really just like me, like establishing like whatever my idea is, going to the studio, you know, cooking up the song, whatever the case is, and then utilizing my team to help bring the full vision to life. So whether it's, you know what I'm saying, going to the videographers, you know, if this is the type of style video I want, I want these type of scenes, I like these type of different shots. Like I always make sure I give people examples of everything that I like, because I don't, I'm not one of those artists that's just kind of like, okay, I make a song, go to a videographer and it's just like, all right, like let's shoot a video. It's like, no, like by the time I come to you, like I've already thought through at least an idea of what I want. You know what I'm saying? So like the, the team around me really just helps me bring everything that I envision to life. And then, you know, of course, they add ideas to it as well. And I love I, I love that. I, I feel like my last few episodes have definitely been with artists. And I, I love that just because it gives you a look into, you know, I feel like sometimes we develop this this mindset of that all these rappers that we see like the gunners the thugs the the babies the drakes whoever you want to call them that a lot of times all they really do is just booth work like all they really do is just the writing the booth work and then you know when it comes to all of the ghost writing and all of that sometimes they don't even really do that but mm -hmm. it's amazing just to hear that you know some of the artists who i've talked to they're 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 close with their engineers they're close with their producers they're learning how to you know how do they do the beats how do they do the editing and i it just goes to speak to that point about versatility people don't realize how important it, it doesn't matter your industry. It doesn't even matter if you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or whatever. Versatility is just important. The fact that you know people would need to call on you, people would need to utilize you, or the fact that you just have a skill set or a mindset or an eye for certain things, bro, it'll make you more useful than unuseful. You feel me? So I love the fact that you know you're getting connected with so many individuals, and at the same time, you're perfecting your craft, but you're also learning and developing new crafts. Just the same. I think that that's such an important thing. So something that you kind of brought up earlier, too, was talking about how you how you kind of just get things going, whether it just be you kind of cooking and you, and you wake up and you already got stuff, but you also said that you felt like you haven't really reached your ceiling mm -hmm. yet. So what is that like? Do you feel like, do you feel like there's some added pressure onto you every time you kind of get into a studio? What is it like when you think about, does that affect how, kind of how you decide what type of beats to hop on, what type of, you know, freestyles or different things that you want to do, who you want to expose yourself to, or are you really just trying to get better in all facets at all times? I'm really just trying to get better all the time, man. Cause like the music, like, believe it or not, like that's like, the easiest part to me is because like it's like I've always been connected with music like even before like I was even thinking about like rapping or like recording songs like I was just always doing something related to music like growing up like I used to uh, play the drum like I'd be beating on my drum pad freestyling rapping and stuff so like you know what I'm saying rapping and like making music like is not new to me like you know sitting down in the studio and recording you know that was a newer process when I first started but like just making music like me, man, me and my homies back home, like, we'd be on the bus, like, before basketball games and stuff. They'd be like, yo, like, you know what I'm saying? Come, come start it off. Boom, they get the beating on the lockers, like, ah, freestyle for the team and stuff. Like, so, like, the music, like, that's the fun part, you know what I'm saying? The minute that it's not fun for me anymore, I don't want to do it anymore. It's like, I do music because I love doing music, not because I love everything that comes with music or being an artist. Like, being an artist is just like, bro, like... It don't even make sense. You put all this money in, you put all this time in, and then you may or may not, you know what I'm saying, reach a certain point. It's just like, I do it because I love it. So like, whatever, whatever I'm feeling that day, it's not like I wake up like, okay, like, I need to make this type of song today. It's just like, no, like I may hear something and get inspired and just pull up a certain type of beat. Like, it's really just whatever I'm feeling for today. Like, and like areas that I know, like I need improvement with. Uh, Cause like before I was, you know, always good at freestyling. So like when I first got my equipment, I would just pull the mic up, hit record and just punch in, punch in. Like I didn't, I just started writing songs this year. Like everything like that I put out like prior to this year, like I just sat in front of the mic and just kept freestyling, kept freestyling until something happened. Like I had to teach myself how to write this year. So like now I done got the pen gang song. So now you about to hear you know, just in like upcoming things that I have, you know, more intention behind the lyrics because it's not just, you know, just free, just boom, like just coming out the dome. So like definitely, definitely certain things that I work on, but it's really like nothing's really ever planned. Like I just have fun with it for real.
Got you. And I think I actually think that I posted that for my um, my one year anniversary. Drake said it. The moment I stop having fun with, it, I'll be done with it. I think that's just so, you know, it's important to think about that when you're you know, when you like you said, from the money, from the time to the effort, the blood, sweat, the tears, everything like that. If you want to do all of that with anything like, yes, granted, there are definitely going to be moments within any business or any entrepreneurial track where, you know, you're just going through it or you're just you're not really feeling it. Or maybe you lost motivation or maybe you're discouraged or maybe something just didn't go your way. But overall, when you really take a step back, when you look at it, you should always be having fun with your craft, man. Like to sit down right here, right now, I'm having fun, man. I'm on IG Live. I'm seeing people join. I'm, I'm sitting here talking with my boy. It's just, it's amazing just to hear people's, you know, their creative process and just the story and everything like that. But it's even more, most importantly, bro, you always got to have the fun with it. So I love that. But the, even more so the fact that you said, yo, my man said he was just sitting in front of the mic. He said he was just punching in and punching out. He said, the, but he said the pen is, he said the pen is working. Oh, yeah. The pen is powerful. So I love that. I'm definitely excited to see that so you know on top of teaching yourself how to write on top of you know really just making that transition and really just getting better and better with it with what is something that you would say that you really have worked on as an artist whether it be since moving to atlanta whether it be since really chasing and starting to do what you wanted to do but what was something that you it it, it doesn't even really more so necessarily have to be something that you might not have been as strong in but what is just something that you know you've kind of made a conscious effort to continue to work on so that you can always be better oh like one of the things just like with being an artist overall especially an independent artist you know what i'm saying uh i've definitely gotten better at just learning the overall business of things and how things operate like like the entertainment industry is not always whether about how good you are or you know what i'm saying if you're better than somebody or not like you know, you can turn on the radio and hear like it ain't about like, you know what I'm saying, who who sound the best. So it's just like I've made a conscious effort to every day, you know, study the game, learn about different things. Okay. Of course, not necessarily what works for somebody else is gonna work for you. Everybody got their own story, but take those bits and pieces of game from different people and you know, really just try to see what works best for yourself. Like really understanding the business and getting better for on the business side uh something that i've definitely work on just to help elevate myself and you know move from one level to the next like that's been like really the biggest thing for me just understanding the business of things love that man business is it's always going to be around it's always going to be you know something that as you continue to to get higher and higher and higher it's just going to be something that only just increases increasing i was looking at even a tweet from meek he was just like basically he'd been in he'd been in a label all this time or he'd been doing this all this time. And now he just realizing that he ain't been getting paid the way he's mm -hmm. supposed to be getting paid. But think about how long he'd been. I, I remember Meek when he was on the corners and granted, he probably ain't have no record then and no deal then, but just think about everything that he's gone through, all the albums, all the mixtapes, freestyle singles, all the publicity, the press he was doing. And just think about how much money he probably lost out on and didn't even realize it just because, you know, he wasn't really taking the time to understand the business side of things or on top of maybe putting somebody in that place, maybe hiring, somebody or maybe hire financial people or business people but you still got to learn it yourself you can't trust and believe that these people are always one just gonna have your best interests in mind but two nobody's perfect they could forget to read through the final lines they can miss certain things too so the fact that you know as an artist you're really not only taking the time to perfect your craft but really learn the ins and outs of it is, is always going to do you more good than bad bro so even in thinking about you moving forward even in thinking about the future but even in thinking about I, I, I more so want to focus on like right now so if somebody came across your page if somebody came across maybe your music or maybe your freestyle or maybe the album or the projects or anything that you got mm -hmm. going on what do you feel like is something that they can go through the page they can go through the website they can go through the music they can talk to they can get it from keys they can even see you live but what is something that you feel like a lot of people don't know about wavy banks that they're going to know sooner that you you would even want them to know maybe something that you know you may not disclose as often or maybe something that people won't just get from listening to your music only and that's it uh i guess one of the things that like i'm not like i would really say it's just like the the work ethic you know what i'm saying it's like okay you may see the final product you know what i'm saying you might like the final product but it's just like do you know what went into it get into this final product? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, even just from like videos, like mixing, mastering, production, everything, like everything that I've ever touched, like has been self-funded. Like I've paid for everything myself, out of pocket expense. Like it's been tens of thousands of dollars like put put into stuff. And I don't think people really understand. It's just like, you know, for your stuff to look a certain way, sound a certain way, you know, unless you just a master of all these skills, like you you gotta pay for that you know what i'm saying 
So it's really just like, it's really just a work ethic, man. Cause like, I don't always ne necessarily show the process and show me working. Cause don't nobody care when you work and they, they just want to see the final thing. You know what I'm saying? Everybody just want to see, okay, what does the end look like? But like all the work that goes into like what the final product is like that. I think that's one thing people don't understand how hard people really work and you know, how much time put into it. They're just like, oh, like, you know, you went to the studio, made a song, da da da, whatever. Or yeah, you shot a video. It's just like nah, like it's it's a lot that goes into it. So really, just the work. I promise you, and it's even more crazy too that you make that point because I think about still people who are running their business or being an entrepreneur or maybe even an artist, but still had a nine to five. So it's just like yo, you are not only punching the clock or, or doing something, you know, for a bigger company or for somebody else, but you still got to work on your craft. If not, just as hard, 10 times to 100 times harder, you know, because when we get off the work, when we when we done with the gigs or whatever, the last thing we feel like doing sometimes is still punching. The last thing I feel like doing when I clock out of my job is staying afterwards, you know, to do interviews like that. But that's not to say it's nothing against the people. It's nothing against the folks. It's just me as a human. I just work from, I just woke up at 630, just got to my job at eight. I just worked from eight to five, just, you know, talking to people, doing whatever, running events, whatever. But you telling me that after I get off at five, I can't just go home. I can't just chill. I got to go home. I, I maybe got to edit or maybe I got to stay after set up, have to set up, do some do some editing, do some video recording, think about the YouTube, look at the analytics, sell, make sure the products are selling, promote, all of that. I feel like people just just see the post. People just see the products. People just think that, you know, we just throwing a bunch of stuff at them, but don't realize your behind the scenes. It took a lot to, you know, put this puzzle in order. It's not just me. Like you said, it's not just me getting in the booth with a pen and a pad. And just letting it go. It's not just me just hitting up somebody and saying, yo, I, da, 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 I'm trying to perform here. Dude, it's, it's so much that goes into that. But I feel like a lot of times we get the misconceptions about the artists because, like you said, we don't always get that behind the scenes. We don't always get that the, the failures, the trials, the tribulations. We just get the finished products or the music video. We just get the live performance. We just get the song on Apple Music. We just get the teases or the, mm -hmm. or the merchandise. But you don't really know what it takes to be in that craft until you're really in it. So... I love that, bro. And I love that, you know, you just been working, but I love that you, you are, you're working from a perspective of, yo, you had to pop out to a different location. You had to link with, yes, some, some ECU folks, but you definitely had to make new connections and new people along the way. It definitely took some, you know, you being uncomfortable, you being in situations where it wasn't always in your best, like interest per se, meaning that you had to, it's self-funded, bro. That's, that takes the cake for me. Self-funded means that, bro, you was dishing everything out of pocket, no handouts. Like this is you all organic, no gimmicks. So that's even, it even goes to show truly the true dedication to your craft. Because I know some people, even myself, like sometimes I think about just how long I've been doing what I've been doing. I haven't been doing it three years, but you think about, I think about how much money I've spent now just from traveling, just from recording, how much money I probably missed out on, how much money, you know, I might have even left on the table or how much money that undisclosed, I don't even realize that I use or I spent. But as an artist, you know, just moving, performances, editing here and there, visuals, all of that, bro, I know it gets crazy. So like you said, the fact that you're still dedicating yourself to that, but not only dedicating yourself to that, dedicating yourself to being better, recognizing that, yo, I haven't hit my ceiling yet. This is far from it. You know, this is just what y'all getting right now. But wait till I, you know, with better resources, with better opportunity, with different management, which is meeting new connections, with even going to different places, you can explore it, bro. So what is something that you would say moving forward you're most looking forward to? What is something that you can even, even if you want to drop a little teaser for the folks, like what can we expect from you like moving forward? What is something, even if you're trying to get involved into a new space, I know you said like y'all got the merchandise and different things like that. Mm -hmm. So what is, you know, what is the future for Wavy Banks? What does it look like long term? Uh, future, uh, short term, you know what I'm saying? Short term is just, you're going to get more final product, you know, more music, more videos, like, uh, long term, like, I, I, this is like, you know what I'm saying? I'm too invested to stop, you know what I'm saying? Plus, like, I feel like everybody's playing catch up to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, even like on the last project, like on that last project, like half of those songs were recorded like 2018, 2019, like that was old material, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm three, four tapes ahead of that, you know what I'm saying? Like I've just been just constantly, constantly, constantly working, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so really just... Look forward just to see more more of the work. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely just excited to see myself too, just like where this work takes me. Like I've always been told, stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Like it's just like so much stuff that's just been kind of like in the vault. And I know before, like, you know, I was kind of like periodically releasing, like I dropped something, wouldn't drop anything for a minute because I was trying to understand, okay, how things work from a marketing perspective. Or it's like, okay, you can make this music, 
how do you get it out? Okay, you got it out to this many people. How do you get it out to more people? You know, so really just learning that. So really just expect to see just more drops, more consistency for sure. Uh, that's one of the biggest things. Like I knew I was dropping, but it would be kind of sporadic sometimes. It's like not nah, like we – it's about to be con- constant drops, man. Constant drops is what to, what to look forward to for real. A lot of visuals too. He said, we locked in. I love visuals, man. He said, look, they don't, they just see the chain. They don't see the pain. They don't know about the things that you don't overcame. Yo, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a use that forever, man. It's on the pick. I'm going I'm to drop it. It's just like, yo, that line spoke to me so hard because it's just like it's it's so true bro they they just see this they just see you know what you putting out they don't know about the trials and the tribulations they don't know about behind closed doors what i'm really going through they don't know about the self-funding the issues that you know people bs and people not being on the same time as me me supposed to you know me coming and it, it's even worse too you know when you come with a professional manner when you come ready to work or when you come just on your grind just you and other people don't match that energy, bro. It's almost like a disrespect to your craft sometimes. And that's why sometimes I love the fact that I'm a one man show just because it's no it's no disrespect to nobody. It's no, you know, me saying that I'm better than you. It's no me saying that, you know, you, you're not built for this or nothing like that. But nobody is going to take your craft as serious as you take your craft. Even fa- like family, even it's some family who I've, I've talked to about my podcast or who has tried to kind of like understand things. And I've almost taken it offensive just because like, you know, you're not really here with it. Like you, you you getting it, but you don't really like get it. Like you just, you know, you know what you see. You know, when I publish the episode, you know that you subscribe, you get a notification. But you don't know that I was staying up to this editing that it wasn't sounding right, that I was hitting the people up again, that some interviews I just had to re-record, that I fumbled the bag a couple of times. Some people I just had to reschedule with, that my fits wasn't looking right sometimes, that I'm just how hard I am on myself sometimes. So the fact that, you know, some people just still see the good in it all and, and love it, but behind you, just like, I could have did that mm-hmm. better. I could have changed that. I could have did that too. I could have, you know, so it's just like, it, it gets to that when you really like in something that's, that shoot, that's locked in. But like you said, bro, that consistency. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready for it. Because like I said, bro, you've been killing it. I've been telling I'll be commenting on Keith's things when he drop them. I'll be throwing love to you, bro. But it's just like, yo, y'all, you locked in, bro. And I love to see it. I love the fact that, you know, you was able to really go out there, really able to connect, link up with people, and really able to eat, bro. So for the people out there tapping in, we got the IG live here. We got um, we got the people who are going to be listening to the YouTube and the audio and everything. Do you feel like there's anything that we haven't touched on today? Any um. Anything that you the people think they should know, you already told us kind of what to look forward to and everything like that. But do you feel like there's anything that we haven't talked about, just things that you've gone through with the process, maybe even things outside of the industry that you just want people to uh, know? Well, about just you? like in general, just like a, a message for people is just like, you know what I'm saying? Definitely like I'm all for like people like chasing their dreams, like, but like don't go into anything expecting stuff to be easy. Like I feel like a lot of people jump into different things and quit early on just because they don't get that, you know, instant gratification or, you know, they feel like, oh, like I worked so hard for this, worked so hard for this and I didn't get the result I want. It's just like really study whatever your field is and study people that are successful or people that you would like to mirror in different things. Like I'm not saying, you know, completely copy somebody, but I'm saying like, okay, like people that may you may look up to or you like this about them or you like that about them really take the time to understand how they got to that process. Like it's so much, especially like in the music industry, man, like this is one of the most cutthroat industries there is, man. It's just like you have to deal with so much, but it's just like if this is something that you really want, like you have to put that time in, like unless you just walk into a perfect situation, perfect, you know, you got the crazy connections, whatever, like you have to work for whatever it is that you want. And if it just, if it was so easy, then like everybody would do it and be successful with it. Not just everybody tries to do it. Like, yeah, a lot of people rap. Cool. A lot of people not good. A lot of people not making money from their raps. A lot of people, you know, paperwork not right. A lot of people might look like they popping, but ain't got no bread. You know what I'm saying? So like really take the time to understand what it is that you're getting yourself into before you get into it. Whew, that's a, yo, y- y'all caught that? IG Live, y'all caught that? All right, I just had to make sure. I see some folks out here, they caught that. But no, that's, bro, that's a big fact. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask this question before we before we ended some things out. So you said look up to, have somebody to look up to, have somebody who you necessarily, like, not, not mirror in a sense, but somebody who, you know, you derive inspiration, you derive motivation from. So getting into the music industry, even obviously, even before you got into it, obviously you were a lover of music, a listener to music and everything, but obviously getting into it, really honing in. Who would be somebody that you say, who does who serves as inspiration for you, who serves as motivation?
motivation? Who do you really look up to? Uh, so I look up to a lot of different people. Like it's a lot of bits and pieces that I take from everywhere, but just like one of like two of the people most recently that I've really been like really like following their stories just because I like the longevity of their careers and the consistency. Like currency has definitely been one of those dudes. It's just like, yo, like this nigga drops something every week, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and he's been in the game forever. It's just like, you know what I'm saying? He might not be the biggest mainstream artist there is or anything, but it's just like, yo, like you have your own thing. Like you, you know what I'm saying? You run your own business. You drop what you want. You move the way that you want to. You've put other people on in the game. It's just like, you have to look at whatever is best for you or whatever type of situation you're trying to make for yourself. And me, like I've always been somebody, cause like I've been in situations where it's just like, all right, like if you want to get a deal, you can get a deal. You'll be bopping, but you ain't gonna have no bread and you're gonna have to do whatever we tell you to do. So it's just like, I'm not going for that. You know what I'm saying? It's going to take, it might take longer. You know what I'm saying? It might take, you know, months or years compared to, you know, overnight. But it's just like, if you just get it overnight, it's just like they gave it to you. And just like they gave it to you, they'll take it from you. You know what I'm saying? Like nobody can take what you built for yourself. So it's like really just, I've been following people who really just built their foundation and really just kind of worked their way up like that. Like, that's been one of the biggest thing. Him, uh, I've definitely been tapping into Ross as well, uh, just on the business side, man. It's like so much, bro, because like rap, it's only but so much money to be made and rap. Like you have to be able to be marketable. You have to be able to make the right business investments. Like Ross got multi, multi, multi millions outside of rap. Like rap might be his smallest check. You know what I'm saying? So it's like really just... Enough, yeah, right? really yeah. just looking at people like that that's just like really motivating you know what i'm saying to really just keep you going it's just like even at times where like you know they had times like that they shared like through interviews things like that it's just like they felt like they was back against the wall had nothing but still found a way to make something happen so we're just people with that same hunger that's dope and i, I love or i love that you brought up like currency because i love artists in that space like yeah the currencies, the larry james the dom the big crits, the it's the folks who we know, like the right people. If you know, you know, type thing. Like if you know they nice, you know they nice. But it's just like they are not mainstream per se. Like folks know about them, folks know when they drop, they post and different things like that. But they literally have their particular crowd. But how they market to that crowd is so amazing that it's like anything or everything that they do gonna be supported just like that. That's how I feel about J. Cole. Like I feel like J. Cole is in a different conversation, but I feel like being that he isn't as involved, involved in everything on social media and things like that, I feel like what he does, you know, just behind the scenes or how he's brought in his crowd, recognize he has that crowd and then kept them like that is the reason why his shows sell out. Is the reason why he can go, you know, ball overseas and then come back and or drop an album and go ball over and do all of this stuff just because it's just like once they got the certain right people locked in, they locked in for life, bro. So I'm, I'm, man, I'm excited for you, man. I'm excited for the growth. I'm excited, like you said. I, I was excited when you said you ain't hit the ceiling yet. And I, I was over there bopping on the tape, like, just like, yo, this is this the one. And now he's telling me that it's old. He said, he said, that's behind. Like, we still got stuff coming. So I love that, bro. So for everybody you know who's going to be looking to tap in with you, who's going to be looking to follow along the journey and even, and even become a new fan, a new subscriber, can you just give us, you know, your social media and Apple Music and everything. and we're Oh, sure. They are. All our social media platforms, it's at Wavy Banks. Uh, that's W-A-V-Y-B-A-N-X. Uh, type the same thing. Apple Music, Spotify. It's the same on everything. Uh, my latest project is just Wavy. Uh, got a couple uh, more visuals. We're going to be rolling out from that and then start dropping some new stuff here. Really new videos this month for real. Uh, so, you know what I'm saying? Any pe- I know a lot of people have been hitting me up, you know, asking, like, I, I know you got more visuals. Like, where they at? Like, I've seen I've seen you working. Like, where they at? Like, they, they coming. So we we about to drop that. Uh, definitely appreciative of, of everybody that's been supporting, everybody that's just now tuning in or everybody that, you know, may tune in in the future. Uh, really just excited to continue the journey and keep going, man. I love that, bro. I love that. And I'm definitely excited for you. I'm definitely appreciating, you know, you for taking the time, for being a part of the vision, for continuing it, bro. And I just want to extend my hand and anything that I could do. Obviously, I'm a supporter now, but anything that I could do moving forward to plug you in and different things like that, I'm definitely here for it, bro. So, and I'm actually being the A um, sometime in December. So we definitely going to rock and we definitely going to make up and make something shake for sure with my boys. So, yeah. So, man, for the, to the IG Live folks, to the YouTube, to the people just listening to me, man, everybody who supports, just like Wavy said, I'm, I'm definitely a 
appreciative of it. We wouldn't be where we are today. Wouldn't be sitting down with my man if it wasn't, you know, for y'all to be 70 plus episodes. And it's really just a blessing, man. So sure. definitely on the way to the top. So yeah, to you, bro, all love, bro. I definitely do appreciate you to everybody else out there. I definitely do appreciate the support. This has been another episode of the Down to Business podcast here with Tamar Turner.